So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's trading spotlight webinar here together with Atmara Markets today with a very, very interesting topic. In fact, we want to talk about bionic trading and uh, what this is, what I what I mean by saying bionic trading. Uh, this is what we want to shine a light on together today. And um, yeah, that means nothing more, in fact, than how to combine, in fact, discretionary trading and automated trading. And um, beside of that, um, if you're watching this right now on YouTube, very, very important, uh, then if you like what you're seeing, please uh, leave a thumb up here. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on uh, the uh, reminder or the, the alert uh, you receive um, so that you're informed once new webinars um, uh, are streamed live, respectively, once recordings are available. Um, and so, Let's first of all probably go through today's agenda um, and, and give you some insights on uh, what is a bionic trader, respectively, why it's so so important. Um, we're talking about something which um, people, to some extent, probably underestimate. In fact, so um, if I'm if I'm discussing with traders, especially um, uh, with more experienced traders, sometimes I I listen to them and hear something like, "Well, emotions in trading, gut feeling. This is something." you should avoid under all circumstances. The thing is that uh, gut feeling, uh, emotions in general, we are human beings, right? So we are emotional, um, 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 we are an emotional species, let's say. Um, these, these are very, very important um, aspects we need to take into uh, consideration when trading the markets. And now the thing is that um, I, over time, um, realized that it's very, very good to, in fact, focus on these and listen to these gut feelings to some extent, still, you probably recognize a pattern within the market and your gut tells you something like, well, this is a positive sign. But just let me give you a personal um, 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 example right now, right here. Um, so currently, we, we see a very strange development, in my opinion, in a stock um, like Pluck, Pluck Power. You've probably seen that. Um, Pluck has um, some, um, um, yeah, has, has seen some bad news, let's call it, over over the last days, um, after markets on Tuesday, there was a release that there is something wrong probably with their accounting. They need to probably restate some numbers. And this is usually a very bad sign for a company. Very, very bad. Um, so I'm located in Berlin, Germany. Um, so Wirecard here is a big topic. Now, the thing is, um, well, you have this, this um, report on accounting. You see the current environment, rising yields. And usually you would expect tech in general to be under pressure, as we can see. Like, look at the NASDAQ 100 right now. But also Pluck should be under pressure, probably even more. I see relative weakness here. And this doesn't happen. It does not break below 33 USD um, per share. Probably this happens today. But all in all, it's somehow it, it seems strong. And then there's a feeling within me which says, well, probably probably from a risk reward perspective, it's probably interesting to uh, consider a long engagement here, at least as long as we trade above 35. Now you look at this market and, and you look at this from a discretionary perspective, and then what you will do over time, it, this is just one example, but over time you, um, if you have a trading journal, which is so important in your trading to document your trading well, well, you can spot patterns also in your own behavior. So like you can tack your trades and call them, let's say, I have a gut feeling here. That was a gut feeling trade, let's call it technical reasons and all this probably um, um, also adds to this to this um, um, whole picture. But all in all, you have a gut feeling on the trading and you call this gut feeling trade. And then after, let's say, 10 gut feeling trades, um, you sum this up, you, you look up your trading journal and you filter and you say, I only want to have a look here at my gut feeling traits. And then you will see if this gut feeling, uh, which is probably some kind of unconscious competence, is something which you can make money out of when it comes to trading. And this is something um, which then uh, where, where the, the automation process comes into play. And this is what we want to look at today, how we can find ways to listen to our gut feeling. So the discretionary approach, I mean, even a discretionary approach can be very systematic, but just to give you a better idea of that, and then take this and try to make this measurable and try to build a trading business based on that. So this is what we want to have a look at and so that you have a better idea on what today's topic will be about. And now what I will do is I want to share my screen here with you and then we will go through today's agenda in detail with some bullet points here. So take it from here. 
So the question is the bionic trader. Um, what is this? This is what we want to introduce. Then we want to start to combine human pattern recognition. I call this gut feeling, but it's also um, um, you can you can um, also use this in other ways. Um, pattern recognition. So you you spot a pattern, something which doesn't feel right, for example, or which is not as bearish as you would expect it, as I just described in plug, for example. Um, and then you use technology like, for example, uh, tools to enter orders um, um, in a special way, but also how to um, um, uh, yeah, make you measurable, in fact. And the tool we want to use here is the so-called Supreme add-on, by the way, which is offered for free on the webpage from Admiral Markets, AdmiralMarkets.com. And there under platforms, you can. it's not just that you can download the MT4, MT5, but there's also the Supreme add-on. And there within this, this is what we want to look at here. There is a Stay Connect tab in fact which helps you already to quantify your trading not in in much the or not in such a way that um uh, i would call it um enough you can get even more info on top of that but it's a very very good starting point i think um then backtesting recognized patterns we will use a trading um, um approach which is usually used in our traders yard um trading community every day in fact with real numbers real trading results here um, we want to forward test it. In fact, the back test is the back test result and the forward test is the real results, which um, can also be, be found in this community. And then I want to show you how you can document your or you, how you can automate your trading in a certain way and how you can then still have a discretionary touch to it and then use this and see whether your discretionary approach, your gut feeling to some extent, is um, a way to optimize your trading to smoothen your equity curve and this is exactly what we are what we are after then in our trading so um about me i'm not really sure whether i want to go into so much so much debt now around my person so my name is jens i did an interview with upmarket markets for further infos please check out the interview um and uh yeah, that's it, in fact. So my name is Jens. I'm located in Berlin, in Germany. I'm in the financial industry for over 15 years, learned trading from scratch um, as a professional trader, really, at a professional trading desk, as a stockbroker, learned how to make markets and built my trading business from there. And um, yeah, today I'm I'm an, a self, I'm an independent, I think, self-dependent or independent trader. Um, and beside my, my other market research I do, for example, and webinars I do, for example, for Atmar Markets, podcasts I do together with Atmar Markets, especially in German, by the way. So if you're based in Germany and if German, the German language is fine for you, check out also the podcast I do together with Atmar here in Germany. I think it's um, worth your time. <laughs> let's, let's call it that way. So then we have already the broker. This is Admiral Markets. Um, they've seen a rebranding now. So it's Admirals. Um, and this is because of the fact that they started out as a financial service provider, especially with a focus on FX and CFD trading. This year, it's the 20th birthday of um, Admiral Markets, in fact. And what's um, certainly interesting, that they now start to extend their um, service they provide to clients from a financial perspective. For example, they have um, a credit card offering now and start to build more financial products around the brand of Admirals. So check out the website, admiralmarkets.com, admirals.com, fully regulated broker, FCA, SISEC, ASIC for Australian market, for example, highly competitive offering, especially when it comes to FX and CFD trading. Here in Germany, for example, we usually refer to Admiral as uh, the DAX expert with the probably most competitive offering, at least I know in the CFD space. So check out admirals.com for further infos. And now we want to dig into today's topic and into the bionic trader. I think you can already, um, uh, you already have an idea on, on what, what this is about after my, my quite lengthy introduction. So discretionary trading, um, we want to do the following. We want to um, give an introduction or respectively a definition of what is discretionary trading and what is automated trading and then how to combine these two approaches. So discretionary trading um, means nothing more that your trades, um, you enter your trades um, via your mouse, let's say, like, like a human does, for example. Um, um, which which also means that you make your decision. You come to the conclusion, like I said, for for example, pluck right now, I look at the chart, I see, well, there's no real follow through on the downside. Um, and now I decide, um, so by the way, if, I, if I'm checking out the screen here, this is the screen uh, where, where the stock price is right now, um, um, uh, um, appears in fact. And uh, so I, I see, okay, there's some interesting 
happening right now. Usually in the current environment, you expect the stock to, to push lower, but it doesn't. It holds 35, pushes to new daily highs from there. And this is probably a sign that um, your overall picture you can draw based on the fundamentals which came out over the last days and over the price action and also from yield markets and also and all this stuff putting together it, that you can say, well, it's bearish, but still the stock doesn't seem to go lower. And this is to some extent, especially in the, given the current environment, probably a very bullish sign. Um, and this is something when you then, then say, okay, I take this information and based on that, I will um, enter an order into the market. It's not something you can really automate, um, but it's a pattern you recognize. And based on the pattern, you just recognize you enter the order. Um, this is completely different to, in fact, what we want to um, uh, look at here today when it comes to this open range breakout approach, which we will, uh, or which we make a topic every day um, in our uh, trading spotlight community, um, when it comes to the LAX, when it comes to the S&P 500. Um, so to some extent, discretionary trading and automated trading, they both follow the same idea in, 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 in fact, because you have a predetermined plan you follow. You have an, let's say, algorithm you follow, a routine. You just have step one, step two, step three, but the decision-making process is uh, in the first place when it comes to discretionary um, um, trading is um, human-based. When it comes to automated trading, usually what you do is you recognize a pattern um, and then you find out via backtest, for example, that this pattern seems to make sense. Like, for example, when it comes to the DAX open range approach, you say, okay, um, we have a pattern that between 9 to 9.05, for example, German time in this case, um, if we see a breakout, while well, the breakout occurs once we're, let's say, on the upside and we are trading above the EMA 50, for example, on five minute time frame, that this can be traded profitably with a, a predetermined risk reward ratio of two to one. You can automate this. This is, in fact, only four steps. You can write down a code um, and then program this via an expert advisor, for example, MQL4, MQL5. There's also ways to um, automate your trading with Python, for example. And then you say, well, I expect this pattern to make money over time since it provides an edge. At least for the time span, you just um, back tested it. Um, and this is um, something which is, again, fully automated. So there's no discretionary approach to that. There's no, um, I have a gut feeling, I, I spot a pattern or something like that. But um, the overall picture, in fact, is completely taken out of the equation here. So you, the only thing you do is you let the EA run, the expert advisor, and then um, you shoot the order on the long side, on the downside, given the predetermined um, or pre-given parameters you just defined, and then take it from there. And the thing is, uh, while the, the automated approach especially takes out the human component that both approaches should follow. And this is something which is, again, discretionary and automated trading based. They should follow a clear predefined rule or rules in general and have a positive expectancy, in fact. So which means positive expectancy in this case, this is what we usually refer to as, is our trading profitable or not? So this is a simple um, equation. It's the average gain multiplied with the average, uh, I'm sorry, the average gain multiplied with the hit rate. And then you subtract the average losing trade multiplied with the losing rate. And if the overall result here is greater zero, you're trading with an edge, given um, um, uh, that, that if you subtract commissions and costs with trading and all that stuff, that you still have a positive expectancy. But um, this is what means profitability in trading, in fact. Um, to some extent, we don't dig too deep into this now because um, it's a different topic, risk money management. But what's certainly interesting in this context is that um, this also gives you a clear explanation of why it means or why it's the, the old saying goes, let the winning trades run, cut the losing trades short. Because if the average gain and the average losing trade here are both part of this equation, which gives an, um, a statement on your overall profitability, if it's a positive expectancy, well, it means that if your average gain is greater than your average losing trade, the chances that this equation is greater than zero increases. And thus, simply speaking, from a mathematical standpoint, where well, you should let winning trades run, cut losing trades short. And um, let's come back now to, uh, to, to these two approaches, discretionary and automated trading, in fact. So um, even though one, well, the thing is that um, um, you fall predetermined rules, even though one might um, argue that, for example, automated trading um, is truly statistic based, 
Um, and manual trading has an emotional component attached that comes naturally with, with the overall trading approach. Um, still, I think the thing is uh, you can measure your emotions to some extent. And this is what we, what we want to focus in our target here. So what we want to do is we want to take the information discretionary uh, or automated trading has um, and take this statistic-based um, approach and then try to somehow make it ac accessible for us as humans and somehow find or let our discretionary trading be part of this automation process and take the best of the two worlds. So our gut feeling here um, on, one, on the one hand and the automation process on the other hand. To so put it differently, for example. So what we can also say is, um, for example, let's assume you have an approach which tells you go long, let's say um, every Monday, every, or no, not go long, but let's say you have a moving average. Let's put it that way. You have a moving average. Um, and once we say the market closes above this moving average, your signal might say, well, go long every Monday, every Thursday, and every Friday. While if you close above this moving average and it's a Tuesday or a Wednesday, you go short. And the other way around. You close below, you're going short every Monday, every Thursday, every Friday. While if you close below this moving average and it's a Tuesday or Wednesday, you go long the other way around. You might now say, is this really um, a profitable system? Well, you can show that this strategy works in case of the DAX for the last I think 20, more than 20 years. It's a po has a positive expectancy, no, no joking. Um, and so now the thing is, you take this, um, and now the thing is still, let's assume you have an environment as we had, for example, one year ago, when it came to a Corona, the lockdown, the massive volatility, the market found itself in a quite strong bullish uptrend. Um, still, uh, you had a clear signal on the short side. And now um, assume that you know, well, we closed above, but I don't really want to be long in this environment. I want to skip the long trades. Um, and so you intervene here because your gut tells you the market just shifted and you don't want to face um, an environment in which you find yourself um, with a potential massive drawdown. Um, given the risk parameter still, but a drawdown is a drawdown and, and you probably will pay for keeping the system running. And so now you intervene and what you now can do is you can document this in your in your Excel sheet, for example. I will show you how to do that um, in, in, in some of the last slides of this presentation. And then what you, will, what you will do is you will document how well you did with your gut feeling, with your intervention, in fact. And if you did better than the basic system, in fact, you just um, increase the expectancy, the positive expectancy of your trading approach. And this is, you made your system more profitable and thus you smoothened your equity curve. And this is exactly in a practical way, how you can understand why it is so worthy to um, be bionic in your trading. You take out um, in a, let's call it normal market environment, the um, second guessing, the, the human approach, and you just enter the trade as the uh, system tells you to do. And still, there is a possibility for you to intervene and to measure you, you write down how well you did in terms of your, of your measurement. And this is exactly where bionic trading, in fact, comes into play, besides using all the technology we want to make a topic here within the next minutes. Then. So now I want to, want to show you how to recognize um, a pattern and how to use technology in your trading uh, with this simple approach, how you will formulate trading based um, um, trading system, which we also use in our uh, trading spotlight community. So what I have here is a DAX on a five minute time frame. And um, so what does pattern recognition mean? I mean, everyone knows what a trading pattern is. So everyone knows what it's a head shoulder formation, what's a bull flag, what's a bear flag and all that so on and so forth. Everyone knows that. Um, but the thing is uh, that this is also something which you can use because every pattern, technical pattern to some extent, is somehow different. Because um, and this is something I, I where where already the discretionary approach comes to um, or comes into play. If someone says I'm 100% technical trader, I can fully understand what you what you mean by that. But a technical pattern does not equal a technical pattern, or put it differently. Um, 
let's look at a stock again. Okay, let's. This is probably a perfect example. So now assume uh, you have, let's say, a stock like Apple. Okay, so a stock everyone somehow knows, and now you, for example, see a breakout happening. So breakout, there's a there's a, um, um, a formation, there's a higher high, um, or uh, no, you have a, a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, and then there's a bullish consolidation, let's say, and then there's the breakout on the upside out of this consolidation. And now the question arises, how likely it is that there will be a real follow through, that the break breakthrough here on the upside will be will be driven by further demand coming into the market and pushing the market higher. That depends on the overall circumstances and the market environment in which such a breakout happens. Um, for example, let's say the breakout happens one day before Christmas. Um, everyone is on vacation. It's, I mean, simply speaking, very roughly speaking, but just to give you an idea on, on what my thinking good is, is behind this. So everyone is on vacation. So it's a thin market environment. There are probably some algorithms somehow trying to fish the stops on the upside or whatever, push the market out. And then you will rather sooner or later, if you trade the breakout on the long side, you will probably within the next one to two weeks find out that it was a fake out and the market returns from its breakout back into the trading range. That's not the same breakout as if the breakout happens once Apple announces, for example, the iPhone 11, for example, or once uh, there is a big um, um, news in the tech world, for example, um, whatever might be positive here. And there's lots of interest being created and the breakout happens based on such a news. Because now you have, for example, big funds who want to increase their current um, um, position they already have in Apple. And thus there will be a massive capital inflow into the stock. And thus the breakout will be more likely to succeed. So that being said, it means there's always, and this is what I'd like to do, there's usually a component, um, um, or no, a combination, combination of technical breakouts in combination with the fundamental driver. So when, for example, volume flows into a market, um, this is something we take out here completely, which makes this approach um, as a basic approach. It's a nice approach. It's an easy to understand approach. But if you want to trade this, I recommend you to put, put in some work, for example, based on what I just presented. It's also a breakout system. Uh, for example, taking into account here components like volume. Volume breakouts um, um, is, is relative volume increasingly um, high here, for example, once the breakout occurs. If the answer is yes, it's likely that the stock will follow through. If the answer is no, probably you should reduce your position size, just to give you an, an, a basic idea. But what we want to do is, first of all, we want to recognize a pattern and then see if the basic assumption, the basic pattern can be traded profitably. And this is exactly what we do here. So we have now the DAX. We look at a range you can see here between eight and nine, oh, um, um, eight and 9.05 CET, so Central European time, it's German time. And this is what you can see here with these two um, horizontal lines. And what you now say is, okay, I take the high and the low within this time span and then based on trading in relation to this blue exponential moving average is the EMA 50 on a five minute time frame. Um, I say, okay, I take the breakout on the upside or on the downside. So I trade in direction of the overall advantage. If we're trading below the EMA 50 on a five minute time frame, I consider the overall um, um, advantage to be, on, to be found on the short side. If we trade above, you should usually find it on the upside. And um, this is exactly what's happening here. So we see the closing below the EMA 50, and thus we trade the breakout on the short side. We have a sell stop into the market, and then we place our stop. This is the exit point. Let me just check here. No, I, I'm sorry. So this is the entry point. So the low, you trade the break of the low of the range. You place the stop here at the high of the range. And your overall risk reward in this context um, is one to two. So that means the difference here between these two red horizontal lines is one R, and then you place your take profit two R away. Let's assume this is 30 points, then your take profit is 60 points away, two times 30 in this case. And now what you can see here is, for example, 
additional idea for the use of, of um, smart lines here, for example. So um, how you can, in this context, um, um, work with an add-on based on a Supreme add-on, but this is not what we want to focus on here, in fact. But what we want to do now is we want to shine a light on what conclusions can we draw out of this, out of this pattern. Now, because now you say, okay, I spotted the pattern. How many times have you probably sit um, in front of your screen and said, hey, you know what? I think this is a um, uh, this is a great idea. This is a pattern I would just recognize. The market is, let's say, the first minutes of um, whatever stock you look at, the first move is probably up. This is most likely not um, having a positive expectancy, but given certain circumstances, this is probably something which is worth testing. And this is exactly what we want to do now. We program this. Um, in this case, we, we built an expert advisor and then we run a back test. And what I have here now is a time span from this 26th of July, 2016 till the 16th of August, 2017. And what you can see here in this context is the result. If you put in these parameters, these input parameters, and you can see you have a rising equity curve in this context. What's of high interest in this um, 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 backtest result here is that you're looking at 225 trades. You see that the hit rate, this is probably something which is of higher interest right now. Please remember that number. It's um, here, you have a number of around 42% hit rate. Um, it's, this is, this is um, 94 winning trades while you have 131 losing trades. So it's 41.78, so around 42% hit rate, 58% losing rate. But, and this is the thing, the average winning trade was 150 euros, while the average losing trade was 99. Also, this is very interesting because this gives you already an idea on uh, the payoff ratio. So the uh, ratio of the average winning trade to the average losing trade. And this is around 1.5. Um, to one in this context. Okay, so this is the backtest result. And at least during this time span, this approach has been profitable. Um, and given that, this is now probably good to go, at least in the basic version. And then you can make small adaptations and see how to optimize this approach, this open range approach. But this is the um, this is the the uh, automated approach. This is like you 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 have clear clean numbers you can now use to make the system better based on your overall market experience. Sometimes your gut feeling, for example, some, my, my, some, some might say, well, today is the ECB uh, announcement day. I don't expect volatility to be increasingly high during this period here. So probably I stay out of the market. One, one idea. So I'm not doing well. You, you're, for example, marking um, the ECB days and you just find out um, you don't trade well around announcements from the ECB, for example. So the system overall uh, doesn't care about your feelings, but if you do not perform well, probably it's a good idea to just skip the trade because if you intervene then, this is what we want to make a topic then in the next few slides, well, probably you're not intervening um, on a good level, let's say, or you're mentally not stable enough uh, that your interventions, which are usually working out well and increase the likelihood of your expectancy being positive, that these increase, that... Um, Still, during announcements from the ECB, you usually do not perform well. Okay, so what we now have is we trade now the system in the real world in this context. And this is exactly what we do um, here in this context. So what we do is that we trade and we have now a connection with FX Blue in this context. This is highly recommended. FX Blue is um, um, it's a platform. It's a software you can connect your account with, um, and then it starts to um, act as a trading journal for you. So it gives you already here some um, some insights on which trades which trades in which asset class did you make for example it gives you a hit rate gives you a loss rate you have also already um, the possibility to work with so-called magic numbers probably that's by the way a great topic for for another a separate um, webinar on fx blue um, because uh, this is this is um, to some extent so important it's it's really important so it's 100 quantitative so what's missing here is like uh, the let's call it um uh, the human component 
So for example, in my um, personal trading journal, I also have, for example, a tag which tells me, did I sleep well? Did I didn't sleep well? Or um, how do I feel in general? Do, do, did I keep my, um, uh, my, 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 my routine, for example? And all this, um, and based on that, I have more ways to differentiate or to 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 filter my trading. In fact, but it's a very good starting point, and I highly recommend if you're trading with Upmarket Markets, um, check out FX Blue. You can easily connect your account with this, even though you don't necessarily need to do that. By the way, you will see um, in a few seconds what I mean by that. Um, but first of all, let's have a look now at the forward test. So we run, we trade the system, but you wonder where do I get these numbers from? Well, I document them. I automate the, um, uh, the, the, the journaling here. And so I have an overview of how well the performance is or isn't. And what's certainly interesting is that we're currently looking here at um, um, a time span of nearly two years with over 350 trades. And what you can see here is that the hit rate over this time span is 41% in the basic version without any interventions, without anything trying to make it better or something. So you have a hit rate of 41%. Remember, our initial um, back test was 42%. So loss rate is in this case 59%. The payoff ratio, again, equals to 1.5 to 1. And what's certainly also very interesting is, for example, the number of consecutive wins of four and consecutive losses of 12. Why is especially this noteworthy? Well, there might have been times in your trading career when you face the streak of losing trades, four, five, six, and then you finally decided to say, okay, I quit. It doesn't make sense anymore. Six, seven losing trades. Obviously, the system does not work anymore. I need a new system. If you have a clear insight on how long, on average, your losing streaks last, in this case, 12. And I can assure you, you can also find easily spots where it's 16, 17 trades. It's not fun, no, no question about that. And certainly there, will, there are ways to avoid this, but still um, it happens. That does not necessarily mean that your overall trading or the strategy is not profitable anymore. So this is what, what I want to um, 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 sensibilize you for. So it is easy, easily possible that you will face such a losing trade in your trading but still um, that this, the system still works and is profitable, even though during such a losing streak, you probably have to find ways how to tweak, how to, after your review process, how to tweak your trading in general, how to make it better. This is what I want to show you then with the discretionary intervention, for example, which is also, by the way, reducing the position size. From purely statistical standpoint, for example, you could easily show um, with a mathematical proof that it's not possible to um, avoid such streaks. And it's also, it's not necessarily positive for your overall expectancy of your approach to reduce the position size during a losing streak. But still, it's something you should take into account because the mental side in trading, even if you're fully automated trader, is very, very important. And if you do not perform well, mentally stable, uh, then in this context, the damage you could do to your account, even though the overall profitability stays, um, um, so it's, it's not that the system is not positive, has, does not have a positive expectancy anymore, again. But still, it could mean that you um, face pain or you struggle with yourself, you struggle with your feelings in such a um, strong way, let's say, that you lose your overall happiness when it comes to trading, which is very important. You have to love what you're doing. If, you're, if you do not love to trade, well, it will be a very, very difficult journey um, you're, you're about to, to enter. And that's one of the reasons why such, such um, um, details on your trading are so valuable because you have a chance to intervene, um, keep on trading a profitable system, but still make it manageable for you to um, overcome such a drawdown. But now, before we come now to the next slide here in this context, to the automated trade generation discretionary intervention, I first of all want to show you this. So this is um, on the website, atmarmarkets.com. And there, under Platforms, you can go to MetaTrader Supreme. If you're already um, a demo account holder, live account holder um, of Atmar Markets, MT4, MT5, doesn't matter. You already have access during uh, um, um, with the uh, traders room in the back in the background. You can you can already access this um, and download it. And I highly recommend this, by the way. So it's um, not just great because of um, discretionary 
um, uh, tools which you can improve your trading with. So for example, I'm a big, 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 big fan of, oh, I'm sorry, where is it? It's not here. I hope it's here. Where's the mini terminal? Oh, unfortunately, it's not here. The mini terminal is not there. So this is probably the, the best of, of all this. So very similar to that. It's a trade terminal, but there's also the mini terminal. The mini terminal, you have an um, um, uh, you, you, you have a, a quick way to enter orders. So we, we already went through this in, a, uh, in another webinar, a trading spot a webinar, where I presented this, this mini terminal, but it's also part of this. So I highly recommend using that. Um, but what we want to focus on is the stay connected tool. So real-time new news directly in the MetaTrader, but not just the real-time news, which are directly forwarded. So I think it's from Reuters, if I'm not mistaken, also from Reuters. But what's more important is this. So this is how um, FX Blue looks here within this environment. Let me just, by the way, check out the website, fxblue.com. It's completely free. So um, and, and obviously, Admiral is working together with FX Blue. So here you can see this. Analyze your trading account. It's in fact, very easy. It's easy to go. Um, here you have an example on how this how this looks. Example trade analysis, and um, you can see here. This is the account um, um, nah, account balance. Uh, you have the equity here in this case. So open trades, profit, for example. You have here average um, winning trade, average losing trade. Um, you have here all assets which you traded. So it's very, very detailed. You have also other stats. So we can now go through this. We could um, make one presentation in one hour on this topic alone, how many details you are delivered here. So for example, you have stats. You can look here, for example, trades, um, which side in which assets you took, how profitable you were, how unprofitable you were, where you can tweak, where you can really re review your trading in detail and in depth. And that's one of the reasons. Um, this goes far beyond what you already offered here within the stake connected Admiral Markets a Supreme add-on tool, by the way. It goes far beyond that. It's um, far more details, but it's a very good starting point to get in touch with this with this um, great feeling or uh, tool here in this context. So now, Let's come back to the uh, presentation. So, oh, by the way, where do I have it? It's here. I'm sorry. So here, here's the presentation. Um, <clears throat> so now what I want to show you, and this goes even one step further when it means, when, what it means if I talk about becoming bionic in your trading. So document your trading uh, in an objective way is crucial to your overall trading success. So to make progress in your trading, you need to know where are your strengths and where are your weaknesses? And when you document your trading, when you journal your trading that way, when you automate this process, getting data on your doing, um, this is the first step. And where you could, for example, find out, well, if you look, for example, up the account I'm trading here with the approach with the DAX, but it's also one approach with the S&P 500, I could find out currently the market is not performing well, not just in terms of open range breakout. So the overall performance is Let's call it mixed. But um, also, in, this, in addition to that, the open range breakout approach does not work as good as it used to work for the S&P 500, for example. What does it mean? Simple solution, do more of DAX trading, do less of S&P 500 trading, very simply speaking. But now we want to top this, and then we want to add something more on becoming more bionic in our trading. So what I like to do is, in fact, trades an automated approach as the one I just presented to you. So the trading signals and the enter um, entering of the market is automatically, purely 100% automatic. And then what I do is I have my real account where um, the signals are generated, but I have also a demo account next to this where um, the signals are also generated. And now the thing is that I trade two accounts with the same strategy let's call it the basic strategy. But in one, I intervene. This is usually my life account. So that means in the demo account, I get the basic strategy and 100% direct feedback on how the basic performance of the strategy currently is. While the life account sees also my intervention based on my market experience, based on my gut feeling, based on my emotions and all this. There are times when I don't intervene because I, I, I don't feel like intervening. So this is also something which is important to recognize, to know yourself well, to know um, when do I perform best and when do make interventions sense. So for example, I don't intervene if I slap bad. 
if I slept well and I have a great day and everything falls in place and I'm 100% in my zone, well, it makes sense to intervene because I, I have a highly high likelihood to increase the profitability of my trading approach. And then what I do is I track my intervention performance in points or in Rs, let's say. So I consider one R and then I just calculate how good or bad in relation to the R um, I performed. And this is data I collect in a simple Excel file. And what I then do after, let's say, 20, 20 days, usually one month, I compare my results. So which means nothing more than if I perform better, I continue to do so. I wonder, okay, why did I perform better? Certainly. And then I will try to make more of that because the intervention I do here obviously works. While if I do not do better, but the system, the basic system performs better and I make the system worse, in this context, I stop intervening. Or at least I wonder, why did I perform worse? Because usually you will say about yourself, hey, I'm experienced. I'm trading the markets for over 10 years actively. So obviously something's going wrong here. Probably I'm not in touch with the market. Didn't I do slip well? Well, there, there are certain ways how, to, how you can tack this and how you can then focus on the process and how to make your trading, in this case, how to make your interventions, in fact, better. And therefore, just to give you an idea on how this looks like, in fact, you have here this outperformance in R. So these are real numbers. Um, and what I do here is I have the outperformance. So I, I took out, um, I, I skipped all the where I didn't intervene. So we're talking about way, way more um, data in this case. So nearly three, four, five times as much, um, which means already that if I intervene, I really need a strong signal that I want to intervene because all in all, I trust the system. I trust um, the basic strategy and there's no reason for me to intervene because I know that there's a positive expectancy attached to that. Um, if I intervene, for example, based on, let's say it's a breakout approach and I see the market moving strongly in the direction of the breakout, but not turning around um, and it, it moves and moves and moves and moves and moves higher and the risk reward of the market continuing to rise, for example, or to drop, depending on the long or short side, um, decreases the more the market moves in my direction. It's a so-called extension on the upside or extension on the downside. I might say I take out the trade here um, and let's see if we bounce from there. If we then bounce and we bounce, let's say, more than 2R, um, I obviously increase the overall expectancy of my trading because the take profit wasn't hit yet. And probably it won't be hit because the market just sees an extension given, for example, some kind of stop fishing or squeeze momentum, which is taken on or whatever. Um, and this is then which helps to smoothen the overall equity curve. The system, the basic system stays profitable, but I increase the profitability by these interventions and trying to make more based on, for example, my market experience, based on my gut feelings and so on and so forth. And um, so here, Again, there is the um, Supreme add-on. And uh, we already ran through this. So you go to platforms, you click on MetaTrader Supreme, and this is where you find it. So admiralmarkets.com, and there you get this MetaTrader Supreme add-on, which already delivers you here with uh, this Stay Connect tool, which gives you a first insight in uh, the connection between FX Blue here and how to quantify your trading and yeah, start your journey uh, to become, uh, in fact, a bionic trader. And which means, first of all, you have to start to collect data. You can then analyze and based on this data, make better trading decisions, in fact. So that brings us already here to the summary for today. Let me just give a quick glance here. That looks, that was good. So what, what do I do? Um, I, I, the screen I'm looking here at, and what do I mean? Uh, we're currently doing well. Well, um, in fact, we can, we can hold we can hold WeWop in this case, volume weighted average price, which is a good sign. Um, so we, we attacked 35. We didn't drop 35. We now reclaimed WeWop. We made new daily highs, and this is usually a positive sign. So let's just hope that probably we'll uh, close the week. Um, I'm better than it started for pluck in fact. So I'm not really sure whether we make it back above 40, but um, yeah, let's see, let's see. Um, so let's come back to the presentation and the summary. So manual and automated trading have both pros and cons as I've just um, demonstrated. And what we wanna do is in fact, we wanna take the best out of the two approaches. So discretionary trading, 
um, has a human component attached, which is positive, but also negative. Emotions can affect your trading in a negative way. Um, well, here in this context, we are especially talking about so-called cognitive biases. Um, the automated approach takes these cognitive biases completely out of the equation, but this is also something which, for example, once the market starts to extend extremely in one or the other direction, can affect at least short term the overall profitability or the smoothness of your equity curve. Um, and what we want to do is we want to combine both, in fact, um, so the discretionary and the automated um, uh, trading approach and try to become a bionic trader, which can make the difference, in fact, and this is also something um, you will find out, become between becoming profitable and not profitable. What do I mean by that? Well, the trading approaches out there, um, which are highly profitably traded by professional traders and their other traders, I give you my system and you just fail because you just can't do uh, the the work. You can't put in the work and 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 um, uh, the, the the intervention um, I put in uh, to make the basic strategy profitable for you, for example. And this is the work you have to put in as a trader, which is yeah something to keep in mind. In fact, and uh, so in my trading, as I pointed out here, I have an automated trade generation. Oh, by the way, I just saw it's twelve questions. Wow. Let me just check, please. Okay, everything fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> I, I just saw it, uh, there's, um, yeah, it was just four, uh, 12 questions. Um, I just hope that I did not miss any of your questions. Uh, that is very, this is very, so such an interesting um, um, approach. And I 100% assure you that I had the same feeling um, about this. So, um, I read here, I prefer manual trading, so I feel more like a trader and not just a button, a button pusher. I can fully understand what you're talking about. The funny thing about this is, um, and this is exactly where now you, you will start a great discussion. We don't have the time here, so I'm, but please find um, uh, um, um, an opportunity to, to exchange ideas in our trading spotlight community. So I'm just let, let's go over here um, and let's, let's discuss this here further in our trading spotlight community. So I give you the link here um, because now a trader, professional trader will say, well, um, feeling is nice. And I like to have a positive feeling when it comes to trading all in all, we, we all prefer to make money. We don't like to, or we don't feel great if we lose money, but at the end of the day, it's all, it all comes down to making money. That's the, the point um, of, of, some, of some traders out there. It's just saying, hey, you know what? Um, I, I don't care about feelings. I just want to make money. And I don't care whether I need to be discretionary or I need to be an automated trader in this context. I just want to make money. And this is exactly um, where this, this um, component comes into, into play. Now, the interesting thing is, and this is usually the point I make in this context, I can fully understand that. Um, and I'm open-minded enough to, to uh, see both sides here. But still, I think that we shouldn't underestimate the feeling component, because I have to feel comfortable doing that. Trading is sometimes very, very brutal and not nice at all. And now the thing is, you wonder probably, um, is there a way to make me feel better? And this is something you can probably find out. Some people are horrible discretionary traders. Once they make their transition to automate their trading, they shine. And, and, and they make money. They start to be consistently profitable. This, the other way around, it's also true. You have automated traders, which just it just doesn't work because they're, as you put it, um, button pushers. I, I, don't do, I don't think so. They just consider themselves to be more human and more a trader once they're um, taking the decisions themselves. Um, if these are good decisions they take, well, they make money in their trading and they just embrace the opportunity to grow um, by managing their emotions, taking out emotions completely out of the equation. For some, it works. For some, it's horrible because they say, hey, for me, trading is not just about making money, but managing myself, learning more about me. Um, oh, I'm sorry, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry. I just realized that was here. Here's the link again for the Spotlight community. I just realized that I send it over only to Upro <laughs> and private. Um, so 
I, I, just just to make make a point, um, the thing is that uh, it, it really depends on you and how you are as a human being. And this is so, so important. So this is one of the reasons why it's so important to ask yourself, who am I and what works for me? And um, still, I think, even if you find out for yourself that this discretionary approach is um, uh, the way you want to go, still that some automation in your trading, especially when it comes to journaling, um, is probably necessary to spot areas where you can improve and grow as a trader, in fact. Um, so, and a great tool to use technology in your trading is the Supreme item. Again, um, I highly recommend you um, downloading it. It's completely free. You can you can um, put this add-on on, on your MetaTrader and really um, make a big step forward, especially when it comes to the use of technology. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's in fact it. So here are, let me just see. Oh, okay, so here are the contact details. By the way, the next webinar um, here uh, will take place on uh, Wednesday, but you have to register again. We will shine a light on precious metals, in fact. Um, let me just um, give you here the website. So there's the education tab, and there you go to Forex and CFD webinars. And um, so this is right now live. This is um, highly recommended. Marcus a daily market out, uh, outlook here, where he's already um, also trading live, by the way. And if I'm not mistaken, he's also using FX Blue. I think there's a, um, a connection between the accounts. So probably you you, have, you already know. Some of you probably already know um, um, of this of this connection. This is no coincidence that he's using that. Um, and this is the webinar I recommend you to register for for next. Wednesday. So it's not with another trading spotlight webinar series, but it's a hot topic webinar, in fact. So here's the uh, link. And next Wednesday, we'll talk again. Oh, by the way, where is it? Um, there's the chat and there's the link. And um, so that's it, in fact, from my end. So um, at the end, I have to, we're back at the fully regulated aspect I mentioned at the beginning when it came to Admirals. Um, here is the risk disclaimer. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. If you're watching this on YouTube and you enjoyed what you just saw, please leave a thumb up here. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I wish you all the best. Happy trading. We talk again next week on Wednesday, 2 p.m. London. Uh, wish me all the best and good luck for my plug trade. Currently, currently we, we have some trouble to reclaim today. We will up, but let's see. I, I'll, I'll keep you updated. Um, in the trading spotlight community, respect of the next week on Wednesday. And that's it for me. So happy, nice, have, have a nice week and happy trading. Watch your stops. See you.